Zay, good news. There were no running back injuries at practice last night. All right. Made it, made it through a practice. So, yeah, I, I just, I don't think Longhorn fans understand how stressful this season's about to be. Because every time your running back gets the ball, you're going to be holding your breath. Uh, we haven't really talked about that. Even with all the, you know, possible position changes that we might see, whether it works out or not, you want your three remaining scholarship backs to stay healthy. And I know you're on that Colin Page train. You're making Trojan up man. Up. Yeah, especially since he's an Austin Knight. You know how I feel about them homegrown kids. But Austin Anderson. Time, yeah, every time a running back gets the ball, we're going to be holding our breath just because we're hoping that they get up. And you're going to a conference where the most ferocious, physical, fast, quick, athletic players are in the nation. It's going to be it's going to be a stressful one for Longhorn fans, you know? I hope everything goes well. Everything still can go well. They still have the dogs to go out and strive for their goals that they set before C.J. Baxter and Christian Clark got hurt. But it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a little stressful. So just you know, bear with us. Lock in, as you said, to Chip and Zay every day here on Texas Sports Unfiltered. Hopefully, with our entertainment. We can relieve that stress a little bit. That's right. That's right. We uh, we take you seriously. We do not take ourselves seriously. But um, I'm hearing the Christian Clark injury was a non-contact injury. You just never know, man. That was like in individual drills, just a bad cut and an Achilles tendon, and that's that's tough. That's, That's a, young. That's young to tear your Achilles, man. Usually when that happens, I think about Kobe mostly when he tore his because they made shoes after him tearing his and stuff, and he came back and he was still really damn good. But it's usually you see it with guys that got a lot of miles under them. And I'm not saying he don't got miles under him during his high school days. We know how, you know, they feed those big-time running backs 25-plus carries a game. But still, him being so young, Harris Achilles, that's tough, man. That's that's a different, you know, all rehab's tough, but Achilles rehab, that that's a different sort of a B. So, and you're trying to get acclimated with the hard curriculum that comes with the University of Texas, <laughs> trying to be that student athlete, if you will. It's tough, man. I, remember, remember Jonathan Gray? Yes. The running back, he tore his Achilles twice. So sometimes you get those, those high performance guys in their, their yeah, muscles. Yeah, KD tore it. Durant, Kevin Durant. Oh, yeah. NBA Finals. Yeah. Yeah. Like, but that was further along in his career. You were talking about young guys. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, usually you see him with guys with miles, but yeah. So Jonathan Gray Ray tore, tore twice, twice like, at Texas? Yeah, at West Virginia, and then again when he was getting ready for pro day. Yikes. So sometimes you got – some guys are just, like, muscled tightly. Um, And I don't know – I don't know – I'm no – physical therapist i'm not going to pretend to know how to handle that but uh christian clark as everybody knows now out for the year with uh torn achilles so within a week you had cj baxter and his torn lcl and pcl season ending and now christian clark so it's um uh, there's no question that it's going to be – you're going to have to be careful about the contact periods. Hopefully, Steve Sarkeesian said he was going to be a lot of live periods in the first two weeks of camp. Okay, 
first two weeks of camp are up. Yeah. So time for some thud. Let uh, me ask you this, partner. Um, we know Darian Gillette is getting some bump at running back. We've although heard. I don't, I don't think that's gonna last. Okay. Uh, he he's back at linebacker from what I'm told. Ryan Niblett's getting a look. Okay. And we'll see. Can someone call Savion Red back? Um, <laughs> okay. So Ryan Niblett get some bump at running back. If it was up to you. With what you've seen, what you heard, how the rest of the position groups look, who would you throw back there and give it a try? I think I would be more inclined to see if Ryan Niblett can like get used to it. He's so fast and he's he's got the I think he's got the love of the game to throw himself in, but the problem with a receiver or people move into the running back position is that action between the tackles, man, because the creases are small in high school. They're big in college. They're small and you just got to get used to running to a crease, like literally a sliver and, and getting through it and, and protecting the football. Cause now you got guys just like those drills where they're going through and people are swiping at them. That's what it's like every play. And and that's why a running back who protects the football is worth his weight in gold. Because you're taking the most hits, you're getting grabbed at by guys who are really good at it. Remember Derek Johnson punching that ball out? Nine forced fumbles in one year. Just him. He was incredible. Texas had, what, eight? Fumble recoveries last year is a team. Yeah, we just picked that up. Yeah, that's got to go up. up. Yeah, that's got to go up. Yeah, but that's yeah, always but, tricky. Well, go keep going. Well, the other thing is, I'm trying to find out because I'm. I know people are like, okay, let go of the Colin Page thing. No, I'm. I want to know because Kai Woods was good enough to help you in if he absolutely had to help you because Jeff Cho offered him a scholarship and he's now at Nevada. Texas is the kind of program where you've got walk-ons who are capable of playing at other schools. And this is the, I mean, Colin Page, I've heard a couple things. The guy's a grinder. I don't want to call him Rudy because I think he's better than Yo, that. Yo, chill. He's better than that. Don't, don't disrespect him. Don't no. What? I don't I don't want to you know, I don't even want to have the conversation if if it's not if it's not on the table, but I think it is. And here's the thing. Again, Texas fans, as long as Jaden Blue and Trey Wisner are doing their thing, the running back position is fine. And the rest of the offense is loaded. I mean, I think there are real questions about who the top three receivers are right now. That's how competitive it is. I think Juan Davis is making things really interesting in the tight end room because he's doing everything right. And could he be splitting time with Amari Nye Black? We know Gunnar Helm's going to be the inline guy. You'd love to see Spencer Shannon, the 6'7", 255, um, number 83 in your program. You'd love to see him get some run Dude, because he's, he's going to have to be Gunnar Helm next year. Um, yeah, Spencer Shannon, 83. And, and so, you know, and Quinn, I think Quinn's ready to take that next step. So you're – you're looking at the running back position. You're saying, oh, man, okay. And it, it, look, it's a it's a hit. It's a hit. It's a jolt that C.J. Baxter is gone. There's no doubt they would have split the carries now. is, You know, I went back and looked at the Alabama 2019-2020 teams. Najee Harris was 232 pounds. Yeah. I mean, Najee Harris is, he is a... 
he is put together. I mean, that dude could handle 250 carries, which he got. He had over 300 touches in 2020. 232 pounds. That dude was put together. Jaden Blue, the, the question people have had, can he go through, can he go between the tackles? Yeah, he can go between the tackles. But I don't know if I want him getting three helmets per play. I mean, you look at look at CJ. CJ got ripped early last year because he wasn't running with low enough pad level. He had some goal line runs where he popped up, he got stopped, and Char Choice was all over him. You know, Savion Red, I mean, Jonathan Brooks, and Jonathan Brooks played heavier than he was. He was only 205. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's legit. Jonathan Brooks, at least 215. At least. I mean, that dude, that dude. And that's where I'm interested to see what Trey Wisner can do in some of these short yardage situations. Because we know that's the one remaining question. Like, you can look at this roster and say, okay, they got guys who can catch short passes, long passes. They got tight ends who can get mismatches. They've got a running back in Jaden Blue who can flex out to a receiver. But who can get the third and one, third and two, the goal line runs? Who can finish drives? That's We won't know that until we get into the season. And that is one of those things. I'm convinced of it. I'm convinced of it. You get off to a good start, forcing turnovers. You get off to a good start, sacking the quarterback. You get off to a good start, finishing drives. It's contagious. But if you get stuck, it starts to become a thing and you got to have some real dudes to to break that kind of stuff like last year they weren't getting the sacks they were getting good pressure but they weren't getting the sacks i think the opponents had 32 sacks and texas had 28. yeah because these teams were so terrified of byron murphy and trevondre sweat getting to the quarterback that ball was getting out of the qb's hands quick so you, it was tough. It was tough to, you know, get off your block. And once you get to the quarterback, that ball's released. Again, go watch that Michael Penix film. That dude was getting the ball off at an extremely quick rate that ain't nobody touching. Like Aiden Hutchinson, you know, Max Crosby, all those guys, Chris Jones. Well, hold on, because Michigan's, Michigan's defense got to him the next week. Oh, that's different. You mean he's all sick and stuff. Yeah, you know, you're right. That defense did. That defense and maybe did. Texas took a lot out of Washington because True. they didn't have the same synapse, the same. They just didn't have the same fire that they yeah. did after having a month to prepare for Texas and then only a week to prepare for Michigan. Yeah. And Michigan's defense was the number one defense in the nation last year held opponents to 10 points per game. That's, that's filthy. Yep, brought a lot of those guys back. Again, like I was telling you and Hummer yesterday, saw mock draft 2025, Mason Graham, number one pick. I was like, shoot. <laughs> All right, well, DJ Campbell, Jake Majors, Aiden Connor, Y'all better be ready. 